I think it's transportation. Transportation and eventually some social effects. That strongly depends whether you are going to build up a mixed-use building with a lot of social meeting areas, supermarkets, restaurants and whatever, so that they have living and working together and that many people do not have to leave the building in the morning hours and come back in the evening hours. If this would be the case, if it is a vertical city, then I think the only limiting factor is the transportation. I would say from a technical aspect, the core, the structural system, all the building services to um, maintain a building of that size and that height will increase. And so what happens to your point in terms of the efficiency of the floor plates and the rest of that to support a building like that um, would be a really big challenge. I think lift strategy is the um, most limiting factor because vertical circulation is uh, crucial and the higher you go the more complex it becomes. Even in our tower you have to change um, the high speed lifts, are, we're near the maximum on the high speed lifts, you have to change several times. Um, I think that's the limiting factor. I frankly think there isn't actually. I think uh, there's the challenge and it, there's going to be always the desire to, to build higher and higher and I think um, you know, the way the mind and the imagination works, I mean engineers and architects and clients will find ways to, to build taller and taller. Whether this makes sense or not is another question, but I mean I think it will always happen. The predominant problem is in the elevator and transportation system. Um, the elevator systems currently can go about 575 uh, meters tall. And so in order to service a one mile high tower, for example, you would have to have between two and three express elevator systems and two, two or three uh, sky lobby systems where someone going to the top of the building would take an, an elevator up to 575 over another elevator up to uh, 1150 over and then uh, potentially get to their floor from there. And clearly safety is one of the big issues and, uh, and uh, getting people out of the building in a set period of time is, is key but also getting uh, uh, people, uh, firemen into the building and getting them to the top of a building where there's a fire is also key and I think that's going to be one of the big challenges. I would say that it's uh, most high-rise buildings are driven by economics and by the the performer that the developers go through. And so I think that <clears throat> when that kind of money and situation and program come together, that that'll probably happen. But I think it's, that's, from my experience in designing buildings, that's the primary driver is the, is the economics of it and how that happens. Technically, it, it is okay, I think. And the Mount Fuji is more than 3,700 meter. The one kilometer is 1,000 meter. We can make, we would like to make half of the Mount Fuji. Back in the, the 90s, we actually did some work, almost a theoretical project on how you build a kilometer high tower. We actually had a site for it, but um, unfortunately it didn't actually go ahead. But at the time, one of the biggest limiting factors was actually how you move people vertically uh, up through the building um, and lift technology. Um, and so one of the things we were actually pioneering at the time was working with uh, lift manufacturers was how do, you, how do you overcome the traditional sort of traction driven lifts and get into electromagnetic uh, lifting and lifts not necessarily moving just vertically but also horizontally um, because one of the things about moving up through a tower is getting people to where they need to go very, very quickly. The economics of it, the feasibility of building a tall building like that uh, for a private developer it would be a, a very hard sell. Um, it's just the, the rate of return on the upfront capital um, to, to do it is, is just not there. 